Hello everyone, I'm Dr. Narayan and Dermatology Registrar. I'm here to update the skin manifestations in COVID-19. First of all, some epidemiology about the COVID. COVID is due to SARS-CoV-2 virus, and which we know about earlier as in terms of SARS virus and MERS COVID-2 virus in 2002 and 12, endemic in China and uh, Saudi Arabia. As you know, the group of these viruses were transmitted quite fast with droplet infections or in terms of fomites touching as hard surfaces or objects. The fatality is quite high with this COVID-19 reported up to 15%. The COVID does produce hypersensitivity rashes like any other viral infection which you see which can be generalized non-specific rashes. As you can see in this picture, a morbidly formed type in the first one you see of a young child on the trunk and on the extremities and you see a young lady in the trunk. These rashes sometimes can be blotchy and they are generalized and they can occur in the face, trunk, extremities, anywhere. Secondly, you can see atracheal rashes which is also generalized and spread throughout the body. Third, we also see an atypical type of variceliform rash like chickenpox which is more common in the trunk more than others. The difference between chickenpox and this is it's more in the trunk and it is not pruritic as in chickenpox. Coming to the manifestations in the toes, this particular discrete manifestations we see in the toes called COVID toes. This has been reported widely recently when the dermatologists started seeing a lot of young patients for consultation for problems in their toes. This has been reported from a series of 132 patients during the COVID outbreak who presented for acral consultations and were found to have, 20% of them were found to have rashes associated with COVID. However, these patients either had COVID symptoms or contact with COVID patients and only 11 of them were confirmed tested by swabs. The evolution of these rashes start with bruise-like well-defined rashes which later develop into blisters and finally evolve into purplish bluish coloration and they crust and heal up in the time span of two weeks. They can either appear before the COVID rash symptoms or at the onset of the COVID rash symptoms. COVID. They are sometimes seen in asymptomatic children as well and they are not associated with the disease severity. So they have never been seen in severely ill patients. So they do not correlate with the severity of the illness. As you can see, the study which came up in the jar, which shows two types of rashes, one of which is like the chill brain like and which is likely in a higher age group of 23 years old and the erythema multiforme or the well-defined rashes in lower, younger teens and young children, which was significant. And they were also observed in the ventral aspect of the soul and feet, which became significant. So when you observe this kind of rashes in patients who are asymptomatic or seeking a consultation, it's good to test for serology or swabs and isolate them from high risk vulnerable people so that they are not infecting others. It would be a biomarker of a COVID if it had been established further with consistent testing for the virus. This is another libido type of rashes which we see in adult patients as well. It's more generalized and this is seen more in symptomatic patients, more like a hypersensitivity rash pronounced in more parts of the body. And again, this is a vasculitic type of rash in a 28 year old which manifested a little bit later on day 13 and she did not report of taking any other medication other than Panadol, Paracetamol for her symptoms. You can see the bilateral distribution with yellowish papules in it which conforms to a vasculitic pattern. Coming to the pathophysiology, we all now know that the virus gain access through the tissues through the ACE2 receptor and they block the conversion of the ACE1 to ACE2 resulting in accumulation of ACE2 which results in activating the cascade of, cascade of immune modulating cytokines especially the C5 to C9 through the alternate pathway which release the membrane attack complex and the lecithin pathway and they lead to 
many complications which leading to low platelets from platelet activation and also thrombosis which can be localized to the lungs or systemic spread throughout the endothelial system. The coagulopathy is the main fatal manifestation which is causing a predominant lung centric coagulopathy which affects both ventilation and perfusion because we see the ACE2 in pneumocytes as well as at the endothelial cells of the lung vasculature. So this leads to a systemic response, systemic cytokine response which again can aggravate the pulmonary vasculopathy leading to a DIC picture in the lungs which is called the pulmonary intravascular coagulation. Later when the disease gets severe, the cytokine response starts affecting the whole endothelial system ranging from microthrombi to thrombotic events leading to limb ischemia and hemorrhagic necrosis. In this, this is one of the study done in Ireland, Dublin which showed a consistent elevation of the D-dimer levels initially and which was correlating with the fibrinolysis presenting in the patients. These patients in Ireland, they were treated prophylactically with low molecular weight heparin and they found these patients had less chance of progressing to overt DIC where rarely few patients presented in the late stages as DIC. So is there a role for therapeutic intervention with anticoagulation. This has to be further studied by randomized controlled trials. And the study was followed, uh, the study followed a study which showed in China that there was a reduced thromboembolic complications in Chinese but increased in African Americans. So the Dublin, the Dublin Institute wanted to check whether the same kind of racial predilection exists in the Caucasians but however they had 15% mortality as well with corresponding to the higher age group. So when you come to the skin manifestations in the critically ill patients, we see the thrombotic vasculopathy manifesting as again DIC like picture which I explained before. The parameters of the laboratory parameters we find which are abnormal are elevated prothrombin time and the partial thromboplastin time a fibrinogen and D-dimer along with low platelets and an elevated CRP. The antipospholipid antibodies like anti-cardiolipin and anti-beta-2 glycoprotein are also elevated which came out in one of the journals in NEJM produced from China. There were some biopsies reported in these critically ill patients which corresponded to the deep-seated vasculitis of big vessels and which caused the thrombotic occlusion of these vessels. And you can see some of the thrombotic episodes like gangrene happening in these patients. So predominantly these are ischemic events happening in the extremities or any tissue showing vascular compromise. Last but not least is the occupation related skin disease we see in healthcare professionals especially on wearing masks which affects the nasal bridge, cheeks and forehead and other pressure related areas and these can be avoided by using no sting barrier cream initially before putting on the masks. Then if there are erosions in this area then you can use thin hydrochloroid dressings as well prior to putting on these masks. Again repeated hand washing leads to hand dermatitis in patients who are prone to in healthcare professionals who are prone to ATOP or contact dermatitis. These are managed by repeated emollients and my topical corticosteroids if the areas are inflamed. Also, flare of existing diseases like acne and rosacea can happen from the wearing of these protective equipments as well as the stress related to functioning during the COVID epidemic. There are a lot more research going on into the treatment strategies for COVID-19. One of the areas being looked at in uh, New York, US is the therapeutic anticoagulation as we discussed before and another one is blocking the cytokine pathway which is the C5 which uh, activates the alternate pathway through biologics, through mono monoclonal antibodies. We still have to wait for the research for treatment first as well as the vaccine to effectively combat this severe epidemic illness. Thank you.